Ladies and gentlemen, it's almost 6.30. Voting in Telangana has come to an end. And now it is time for exit polls. Surveys that various news networks undertake to give us a broad indication as to how the picture will play out on D-Day, that in this case is the 3rd of December. Now, it's been a very hectic election season for five states with history, reputations and careers at stake. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll be telling you what various pollsters are predicting and then put out an average for you. Now, this is called a poll of polls in TV language. You're already familiar with it. Uh, let's start with Chhattisgarh. This is where the BJP and the Congress were pitted against each other. This was a direct fight. The Fir Se Congress loving a slogan had clashed with Modi's guarantees. But the elephant in the room was what? It was the Mahadev app and how much the alleged betting app scam uh, would impact these elections. Now, in the 2018 assembly elections, the Congress had trounced the BJP. It had ended their 15-year rule in the state. The Congress had backed 68 seats in the 90-member assembly, while the BJP had secured just 15. This time round, that's, that's last time, that's 2018. Now let's tell you what exit polls are saying. This time round, most pollsters are pitting the Congress around the halfway mark, which is 46. Now just look at the predictions that are coming in uh, via various agencies. We are putting out five for you so that not to clock the screen and confuse all of you. Now as for the predictions, the BJP elect to finish a close second. Uh, look at the ABP uh, seawater survey, for instance. What, a, what is it telling us? It is telling us that the BJP will get around 36 to 48 seats, while the Congress will end up with 41 to 53 seats. Uh, can it be called neck to neck? Possibly, yes. Janki Baat, uh, BJP 34 to 45. That, that's a pretty broad range. And the Congress 42 to 53. So, uh, a clear lead. Janki Bath is giving a clear lead to the International Congress. India Today Access, My India, have a reputation of being fairly accurate. They're giving 36 to 46 to the BJP and 40 to 50 to the International Congress. Uh, not really neck to neck. There's a clear edge that the Congress party has. Again, Republic TV, 34 to 42 to the BJP and 44 to 52 to the International Congress. Uh, India Today, CNX, 30 to 40 to the BJP, 46 to 56 to the Indian National Congress. Essentially to say that the Indian National Congress is in a position to form a government at least as far as Chhattisgarh is concerned and at least as far as these exit poll numbers on our screens are concerned. Uh, let me go straight across uh, to someone who's uh, watching these results uh, very closely, the Deputy Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, Mr. Dio. Thank you very much. I'm just looking at uh, exit poll numbers. Uh, they're looking for the con good for the Congress party in Chhattisgarh. Uh, are you taking these projections with a pinch of salt or is it time to open the bubbly? I, I do always take it with a pinch of salt. But these are projections. So uh, I'd always like to wait for the huh? third till the counting is uh, started and done and out. Huh? And then, then we'll really know what is... Uh, the true picture. But so far, so good. So, so no... Yeah, so far, so good. So no celebrations in the Congress camp tonight? Is that what you're saying? Uh, it would be a cause of uh, happiness, certainly, but as a projection. So I would mm. always like to wait till the third. Uh, we should not count our chickens before they have actually hatched. And, and exit polls are known to get it wrong, so that may not be a bad strategy. Can I ask you then, if these exit poll figures stand, what worked for the Congress party in Chhattisgarh? And why the Mahadev allegations didn't clearly stick to the chief minister? It was an allegation first off. There was nothing substantial that was put forward. Hmm. So whatever was uh, leveled, they were simply allegations. And uh, as far as uh, acceptability amongst the people, we tried to do what we had said and we delivered uh, what we said we would deliver. So I think uh, we have been able to retain the confidence of the people, what we call the bharosa. Hmm. 
Are you looking forward to a second term as Deputy Chief Minister or first term as Chief Minister? Uh, we know there's been some infighting. We understand that last time you had been promised the Chief Minister's post as well in two and a half years. That didn't happen. What's the hope for this, uh, for this election and this result? That is uh, inconsequential to the extent that uh, I want to work. Uh, the next uh, five years, mm. I'm looking at wanting to do 10 years work in the next five years. And uh, I, if I get the opportunity to do that, uh, I will be a satisfied individual. Yes, that is irrespective of whether you're made chief minister or not. Whatever uh, responsibility our high command gives me. I want to work. I want to do, uh, do something uh, for the people, for the state, for those who have voted me. Okay, Mr. T.S. Singh Dio, we leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much for, uh, for your time. You're saying you're taking these uh, exit poll numbers, which actually are good news for you with a pinch of salt. You would prefer to wait uh, till December 3rd uh, to start celebrating. Thank you very much for joining us all the way from Chhattisgarh. Let's now turn to India's largest state, Rajasthan. Needless to say, this was a high-pitched battle. The Congress focused on Vikas and banked on its seven guarantees. The BJP saw red and I mean the Red Diary, they attacked the Rajasthan government over corruption, over crime against women, over appeasement and paper leaks as well. Now, in Rajasthan, there's been a trend of alternating governments since 1998. Basically, the power shifts between the Congress and the BJP every five years. And so far, that tradition has held. So, technically, it is the Bharatiya Janta Party's turn to rule. The Congress is hoping it can buck the trend, but that looks highly unlikely given the exit poll numbers. We'll put that out for you. Pollsters believe that the Janta in the state is bored of the two faces, that is the Shog Gehlot and Vasundhara Raje, who have held the chief minister post alternatively in Rajasthan for many, many years now, and is expecting a change. Uh, today, Mr. Gehlot sounded almost defeated. We'll play that soundbite out for you. And it came before these exit poll numbers came in. Uh, but just, just take a look at this. I think most polls, most polls, and you have four of them on your screens, are giving Rajasthan to the BJP. Times Now ETG is giving 108 to 128 seats. The majority uh, in the 199 member assembly will be 101. Janki Baat. 100 to 122, again, comfortable win. Uh, we have TV9's uh, poll strat as well, 100 to 110, uh, again, comfortable. And we have PMARC that is giving Rajasthan to the BJP with 105 to 125. So if you look at the chart, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what is very clear is that the BJP will sail to victory fairly safely in the state of Rajasthan as far as these exit polls are concerned, according to the exit polls. But as I'm saying, a caveat here, exit polls are known to get it wrong. Let's now listen in very quickly to Rajasthan's Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot, who was hoping uh, to defeat history, uh, not just the BJP. He was hoping to defeat history in Rajasthan as well. It may not happen according to the exit polls. He sounded almost defeated when he spoke to the press, quickly playing out that soundbite. एग्जिट पोल कुछ भी आए सरकार कांग्रेस की बनेगी राजस्थान के अंदर तीन जो मोदी जी अमित शाह जी पांच साल मुख्यमंत्री का आए केंद्रीय मंत्री की तो लाइन लगी हुई थी सबने एक भाषा बोली वो भाषा थी डरावनी भाषा थी बदले भावना की तनाव पैदा करने वाली जो भाषा बोल रहे थे वो वो किसी को पसंद नहीं आ रही थी Yogi Ji Maharaj, you know what you said. So, this is a big deal. They do a big deal in the name of the Dharam. It seems that if they are going, they are going to be a big deal. But it doesn't seem that they are going to be a big deal. Okay, from Rajasthan, quickly, shifting our focus to Hindustan's heart, that is Madhya Pradesh, where there is a neck-to-neck battle that was predicted between the BJP and the Congress. Is that how it has turned out to be? Uh, let's put out the exit, uh, exit poll figures on our screen, screens. Things, of course, continue to remain tricky here. There is an anti-incumbency wave against Mamaji, that is the current Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan. He's fighting both discord within the Saffron Party and fatigue at the same time. Shivrat Singh 
Khan is the longest serving BJP chief minister, but he wasn't named the chief ministerial candidate by the party. He has been at the helm for 20 years now. Then there is, of course, the Congress, which is in revenge mode. It is being led by Kamal Nath and supported by one-time rival Digvijay Singh. Quick look as you look at these numbers that are coming in uh, from pollsters. Again, uh, not all pollsters have put out their numbers for Madhya Pradesh, but what we are putting out on our screens are the ones that are out. Uh, Jan Ki Baat, TV9 and Republic TV. It was predicted to be a neck-to-neck -neck race, and is that how it's turning out to be? Just take a look at the uh, picture on your screens. 100 to 123 for the BJP is what Jan Ki Baat is giving. 102 to 125. So that is actually neck-to-neck -neck as far as Jan Ki Baat is concerned. Uh, their prediction is that the fight will go down to the wire. Uh, TV9, 106 to 116, 111 to 121, which means they are giving a clear lead to the Indian National Congress, but just about, ladies and gentlemen, just about. What about Republic TV? Uh, a clear lead for the BJP, according to Republic TV, 118 to 130 uh, for the BJP. And for the Indian National Congress, you have 97 to 107, which means there, there, there is a, uh, who's, who, let, let's quickly see who's giving a clear lead. All right, so, uh, so essentially the exit polls aren't giving us a very clear picture. Uh, there are a couple that are giving a clear lead to the BJP. There is one that is giving a clear lead to the Indian National Congress. This, this fight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, was predicted to go down the wire. You have certain things that have worked for the BJP. You cannot deny that. The BJP is largely Behen Yojana. It has been a massive hit. It was introduced this June. The scheme gives financial assistance of uh, 1,250 rupees to over one crore poor women every month. Now, not declaring Shivrat Singh Chauhan as the chief ministerial face may actually have worked for the BJP. It has somewhat helped in neutralizing some anti-incumbency against him. Then there were seven MPs who were fielded in assembly elections by the BJP, including three union ministers. That may have given the BJP an edge as well, boosting the party's message of collective leadership. And then, of course, there's always the Modi factor. Coming to the Congress, uh, unlike the BJP, it has had clarity as far as its leadership is concerned. Ex-Chief Minister Kamal Nath has been the face of the campaign. Now, this may advantage the party as it speaks to a singular message for voters. Then there is the Congress's promise to bring back the old pension scheme. The other promise of gas cylinders, electricity, electricity subsidies. All these have already been fulfilled in Karnataka. That may have inspired voters as there is delivery of promises. What has worked out, what hasn't, we are again not very clear as far as these exit poll numbers are concerned. Uh, this was a fight. Let's put out the numbers for Rajasthan uh, to my producers. The fight was expected to go down the wire and according to the three polls, exit polls on our screens, that is what it is looking like. Uh, as, uh, 116 is the majority mark and Jan Ki Baat, Again, uh, predicting an almost neck-to-neck -neck fight. TV9 giving a clear lead to the Indian National Congress and Republic TV giving a clear lead to the BJP. Uh, my guest this evening, Madhavan Narayan, is a senior journalist joining us on the broadcast. Sai Shekhar Angara is again a senior journalist joining us on the broadcast. Uh, as far as Telangana is concerned, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as we have those exit poll numbers, uh, we'll be putting them out for you because Telangana is... Is, is turning out to be the fight of this election season. And that is where the big surprise may be sprung. Uh, Madhavan Narayan, of what we have on our screen so far, what do you think of these exit poll numbers? And let us start from Madhya Pradesh, where the picture is still not clear. This was a fight that was, uh, that was predicted to go down the wires. And the three exit poll numbers that we have, let's put out Rajasthan as well once again, seem to suggest as much. Well, um... Uh, I have just been looking up, you know, there are two, three ways to analyze any exit poll, uh, particularly because pollsters have, mm. on the one hand, samples and methodologies, whereas what do I do? Apart from the poll of poll approach, we also have to look at the track record of various pollsters before. India Today Access usually has a very strong track record. I was looking at mm. uh, that as well as mm. the turnout numbers. Now, Madhya Pradesh turnout is uh, 77%, which is very high. And the general wisdom is that Correct. turnout, uh, when high, turn, tend to be uh, 
you know, anti-incumbency. From that point of view, I would tend to go with these, mm. uh, you know, Madhya Pradesh uh, outcomes. Uh, we haven't yet seen the Axis India Today numbers mm. on Madhya Pradesh. I have taken a peek at the uh, a live blog that India Today uh, Axis has been putting out, and they are calling the election in favor of Rajasthan uh, uh, Congress in Rajasthan, which is a huge uh, thing, if you ask mm. me. As far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned, I am not hmm. surprised, but I would like to make one point. The collective leadership is something conceptual. So you cannot be applying one rule in Uttar hmm. Pradesh and another rule in Madhya Pradesh and hope that the voter ed electorate will hmm. like the double engine Sarkar in Uttar Pradesh and collective leadership in Madhya Pradesh. So I, uh, one important point, Shreya, the hmm. way I look at it is I discount uh, the campaign agenda of parties, I look more at the manifestos and the deliverables because that seems to be uh, working mm. better in some ways. From that point of view, BJP and Congress are mm. absolutely neck and neck in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, but given the high turnout, mm. well, let me explain both aspects. Farmers, women and uh, youth have been wooed by both parties, handouts, in spite of Mr. Narendra Modi's official uh, talk against Muftki Revdi and uh, Revdi, uh, the fact is that, as you yourself mm -hmm. mentioned, largely uh, Van Yojana, the BJP uh, has been mm -hmm. uh, late but strong in responding with uh, populist schemes or whatever you want to call them. I don't, you know, these are negative words. As far as I'm concerned, if there are schemes that appeal to the electorate from a way that touches their lives, it is a good thing, sure. and the BJP has been doing this in Madhya Pradesh, and Congress has been promising it. So, from that point of view, the BJP, uh, uh, everything, all things, as they say in economics, other things remaining constant, the edge seems to be towards the BJP, because hmm. the anti uh, if other things are constant, the anti incumbency seems to get a higher hand, and that's hmm. what these exit polls seem to suggest from Madhya Pradesh, uh, although sure. I am yet to watch the Axis India hmm. Today number. Because that is something personally I keep a yeah. higher weightage on based on past record. Just like in mutual funds, past performance is not a Absolutely. guarantee I for agree with you. current success. So yeah. that is there. <laughs> that's true. Uh, uh, th that's true. Uh, I, Chhattisgarh again. Uh, Mr. Angara, Chhattisgarh is a was a foregone conclusion. Uh, there were enough people who had traveled to the ground, enough pollsters who had said that uh, the Congress is winning that uh, that one, and that that's what the exit poll numbers on our screen seem to suggest as well. So Chhattisgarh is clear. Madhya Pradesh, it could still very well go to the wires. Cong Rajasthan, uh, will it end up being a close fight again? We cannot say as of now. I'll wait for more figures to come out. I'll wait for more exit poll numbers to come out as well. Uh, we, we have enough on our screens right now, but the picture, if you if you can take a look at, uh, uh, you know, the picture on your screen, Rajasthan is going to the BJP quite clearly. Uh, but no surprise here, given the history of the state, given the revolving door. Technically, in any yeah. case, it was time uh, for the BJP yeah. to rule. Yeah. So, Rajasthan, BJP might uh, make it, but usually exit polls, I take it with a mm. pinch of salt. Exit poll results are usually, they are not very accurate in that sense. Largely, they may come true, but uh, mm. not always. Uh, the, there were occasions when, you know, large organizations and the large media houses also had to apologize or, you know, lick their wounds. Uh, for example, not the earlier one, but the erstwhile election of Nitish Kumar, almost every agency has gone wrong in Bihar. So I am not very confident of the outcome mm -hmm. of the exit polls, but Rajasthan, since uh, the difference is very huge, and as you rightly pointed out, uh, it's, you know, it's a revolving door, uh, like uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, earlier Tamil Nadu. I am not very sure whether Tamil Nadu will be the same early again. But then, so they may change, mm. they keep mm. on changing the government. So they quite, uh, it's quite possible that you know BJP might uh, make it big in Rajasthan. Mm. Okay, okay. No numbers for Telangana. Telangana's uh, vote, uh, you know, voting has just finished at six o'clock. No numbers. At least I don't have uh, exit poll numbers for Telangana. Uh, but uh, you know, when the elections began, Mr. Angara, the general belief was that uh, it's going to be a cakewalk for the BRS. Not an easy cakewalk, but the BRS will walk away with these elections. That is not how things are turning out 
by every indication. The Congress is in resurgent mode. Revanth Reddy has done a marvelous job. You just cannot say which way Telangana will go right now. That confidence that the BRS had two months ago or three months ago, that's clearly shaky. I agree with you. I really agree with you. And Congress has really given a, a tough fight. And Congress has caused sufficient buzz. And uh, Congress has tried to capitalize on the uh, anti-incumbency in uh, several constituencies. And also the general fatigue uh, among the people, uh, because BRS has, uh, uh, you know, has been there in power for 10 years. But then BRS hasn't done badly either. Uh, there are quite a few local Correct. surveys are coming up now, and uh, they are giving a key, keen, fi keen fight as the uh, outcome. Some uh, agencies have given an advantage to the Congress, and some agencies have given uh, uh, advantage to the BRS. But I sincerely believe that, you know, mm. uh, at 2 p.m. on 3rd, uh, the actual results will start pouring out. And uh, I also feel that mm. at least 20 to 25 or maybe 30 constituencies will have uh, majorities less than 2,000. So exit polls may not be able to uh, mm. gauge the pulse of the people uh, in that sense. So uh, I, I feel, you know, BRS is still, uh, it will form the government. Uh, given the internal dissensions within the Congress, and then Congress may not promise a specific person, project a specific person as the chief ministerial candidate, mm. and then there are groups within the Congress and MLAs uh, may not really align with the leader that was identified by the Congress as it is. They have claimed about 10 to 12 candidates mm. have claimed to be the chief ministers. So considering this and uh, okay. uh, KCR's All ability right. to... KCR's Can I just quickly to... interrupt you here, Mr. Angara? Can I just quickly interrupt you here? Uh, we, have the, we have all the poll figures now. Uh, just take a look at your screens. I would want, I would urge you and I would yeah. urge Malvan Narayan to take a look at the screens. As well. this, is, this is the exit poll numbers that are coming to us for the state of Telangana, which, which could just bring a surprise. How is it looking? Uh, TV9, 48 to 58 for the BRS, 49 to 59. Uh, 49 to 59 for the Indian National Congress. That is, oh, well, that is neck to neck. Janki yes. Bagh, 40 to 55 to the BRS, 48 to 64 for the Indian National Congress. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yes. A clear edge here. Janki Bagh is giving a clear edge here to the Indian National Congress. Let's see what India, I India TV is doing. This is not India Today, ladies and gentlemen. This is India TV. Uh, 31 to 47 for the BRS. And 63 to 79 for the Indian National Congress. Uh, a clear win. 60, as you know, is the majority mark in Telangana, ladies and gentlemen. So that's a, that's a clear win for the Indian National Congress as far as India TV is concerned. What about Republic TV? 46 to 56 for the BRS and 58 to 68 for the Congress party. Oh my God, Madhavan Narayan. The Indian National Congress, it seems, according to the exit poll figures on our screens, it seems the Congress is walking away with Telangana. This will be a huge setback yeah. to the BRS. Uh, yes, certainly, but I'm not surprised. But I would like you to, uh, well, all uh, for a change this time, I'm not surprised because all the uh, ground-level reports as well as issues suggested that uh, the honeymoon for TRS for having founded uh, led the movement for Telangana is over. You know, TRS is in the same boat as the Indian National Congress was for all of India in the mid-60s. That you enjoy the honeymoon of leading the movement mm. and then the uh, backlash kicks. Two points to note here, which is that uh, ideologically, Congress and Telangana are not too far apart. But uh, in terms of implementation... Correct. Uh, Telangana schemes don't seem to have worked as much in uh, urban areas, especially for unemployed youth, whereas it has worked for farmers. But what has worked for Congress is the anti-incumbency mm. sentiment. But uh, interestingly, I would like you to, because it's not yet final, you know, so uh, as they say, the fat lady hasn't sung. So uh, the important point to remember mm. is in the event of a neck and neck con uh, outcome, which a couple of uh, polls seem to suggest, uh, BJP as well as the All India Majlis uh, MIM might play a role 
let's not completely take our eyes off that let's, because let's put back the numbers it, for telangana on the screens please hmm yeah so uh, if is and there Mr. a maker syndrome coming in because if the majority is at 60 and uh, in, uh, let's say the indian national hmm. congress gets the most the most conservative poll suggests 59 on the maximum for uh, you know hmm. uh, uh, congress in which case the interesting part is the Congress has been calling the AIMM as, um, MIM as a B team of the BJP because of Mr. Ovaisi's posturing. Correct. And the Mr. Modi Correct. and uh, KCR of Telangana had a run-in when Modi publicly said that the K BRS wanted to be part of NDA. So interestingly, the would-be allies are already mm -hmm. having uh, fights. Ideologically speaking, you would expect uh, Congress and the AIMMM to come together, which I think might happen in the uh, case of a slightly short of uh, majority because ideologically they will come together. But all this rhetoric of pointing to each other uh, and saying plan team B, team B, you know, uh, that kind of syndrome is going to meet some interesting consequences. And, and here's, so, the yeah. here's the point. Here's the point the BJP numbers and now you can either look at it as the glass half, half full or glass half empty. Uh, they, they, I mean, they put in a lot of effort. Uh, the Prime Minister was there in Hyderabad uh, just about 48 hours ago doing that massive road show. Uh, well, their numbers, of course, much, much better than from last time. Last time it was only one. Even, I mean, if, even if you just average out the figures for the BJP, uh, even if they, uh, you, you know, probably they'll, they'll manage to win five, five to six seats. Uh, which is which is the party being washed out completely? But again, the campaign had lost steam. We had seen that during uh, during the last fifteen to twenty days. So I, I don't think anyone was putting too much weightage on how the BJP is going to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but the point is, could the BJP, in case in case it comes to it, could the BJP actually help the BRS out uh, if it comes to it? Of course, they will yeah, not ally with the International yeah, Congress I, to I, let I, them form I, the government. But it could happen with the BRS. That's a possibility. Yeah, I would not rule out that possibility because of two reasons. One is that the BRS is, although yeah. it has been very uh, kind and uh, affirmative towards the Dalits and minorities, as also has one finger in some kind of a Hindutva imagery, if you've noticed the way KCR has been performing. Correct. And also BRS, like mm -hmm. Naveen Patnaik's BJD in Odisha and uh, Jagan Reddy's uh, YSR Congress in Andhra, wants to maintain a strategically mm. neutral or this uh, identity. I would call it within the Indian context Correct. as a non-alignment. So uh, this is a very interesting thing because you can uh. swing both ways in the event of uh, something. It's like this. You don't touch my fifth term and I will be happy to collaborate with you. That is what MGR did with Indira Gandhi uh, in this the 70s and 80s. So uh, if you're interesting, uh, okay. thanks, but so, I personally so think Congress I'm will make it. At the end of the show... Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm at the end of the show, and that is what exit polls seem to suggest a clear edge. All of them giving a very clear edge to the Congress party. Is this a bit like Afghanistan defeating Australia and winning the World Cup? Uh, we, we'll talk about that at 8 o'clock. For the moment, we'll leave it here. Thank you very much. Madhavan Narayan, thank you very much for your time. Sai Shekhar Angara, thank you very much for, for your time. Of course, uh, there will be more figures and more numbers that will be coming out. So on Mirror Now, over the next couple of hours, that's what we are sticking to, giving you the poll of polls, putting out all exit polls and telling you what the average is turning out to be. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. I'm slipping into a break. My colleague Deepak Bupanna joining you from Bangalore now. Do stay with us.